This video is brought to you by ExtremeFinitism.com Why 0.9 recurring does not equal 1 How can we get 0.9 recurring? Well, if we assume 1 third equals 0.3 recurring then we can multiply both sides by 3 to get 1 equals 0.9 recurring but the validity of this argument depends on the validity of the starting assumption can we assume that 1 third equals 0.3 recurring? If we divide 1 by 3, does it result in 0.3 recurring? Before we tackle 1 third, let's first look at a well-behaved decimal expansion. That is to say, one that ends nicely. If we want to see the decimal expansion of a fraction, we need to perform the division operation. And so when we do the division operation on a fraction like 1 eighth, we are performing a process where we get 0, 0.1, then we get a 2, and then we get a 5, and at this point the division ends. And then we can put an equal sign in and say 1 eighth equals 0 0.125. Now if we try and do the same with 1 third, we start doing the process and it seems to be working okay but we keep getting more and more threes and we soon realize this is going to keep going on and on and on and so we hit this big problem that the process does not end we don't get to the nice end point where we can put the equal sign in like we could do with one eighth we can of course use values like pi e, the square root of 2, and 1 third in equations. It's only when we try to convert these values to decimal numbers that we encounter this endlessness problem. And since the decimal expansion has no end point, we are forced to introduce a rounding error if we want a numeric answer. Unlike the example with 1 eighth, we do not get a fixed result. Here, our division process goes on endlessly. We need to appreciate what is usually meant by 0 0.3 recurring. Meaning 1, a decimal number with infinitely many digits. Notice the expression infinitely many. Meaning 2, the limit of the series where the nth term is 3 over 10 to the power n. But this second meaning effectively says that when we write 0 0.3 recurring, it's just another way of writing the fraction one third. It says nothing about decimal numbers. So for 0 0.3 recurring to be a decimal, we are left with meaning one to investigate. So what does infinitely many digits mean? Well, we can think of 0 0.3 recurring as a series of terms, three tenths, three hundredths, three thousandths, and so on. The sum of the series gets closer to, but never reaches one third. Although no finite size will make the sum of the series equal one third, the idea of infinitely many is that somehow the sum of the series can equate to one third. One difficulty in understanding the concept of infinitely many is how can the value stop at one third if the series does not end. Is the idea of infinitely many a mistake that ultimately leads to contradictions, or can we just call the things we don't understand paradoxes and move on? Like 0 0.3 recurring, 0 0.9 recurring is also supposed to contain infinitely many digits, and so if we could prove mathematically that 0.9 recurring does equate to 1, then this would suggest that infinitely many does have a real meaning. So here is the famous 10x minus x proof. We start off with x equals 0.9 recurring. Then we multiply both sides by 10 to get 10x equals 9.9 .9 recurring. Then we take away what we started with. And on the left hand side we get 10x minus x is 9x. And on the right hand side we get 9.9 .9 recurring minus 0.9 .9 recurring equals 9. We divide throughout by 9 and we end up with x equals 1. And since we started off with x equals 0.9 recurring, 
we appear to have proved that 0.9 recurring equals 1. The issue here is a subtraction operation. How do we determine if the endless part of x exactly matches the endless part of 10x? Now it appears obvious that the trailing parts cancel out, but this is what we call an informal proof. In order to be absolutely sure, we need to do this with mathematical rigour. In a rigorous approach, we would show that the first n terms cancel each other out, then all subsequent terms can be deemed to cancel out, and we will have a rigorous proof that 0.9 recurring equals 1. And so let's do a more rigorous approach to this proof. We start off by expressing 0.9 recurring as a series up to the nth term. We're assuming that there are an endless number of terms after the nth term, infinitely many if you prefer. But we only need to consider up to the nth term, because all of these subsequent terms can be considered to have cancelled out, if we can show that all terms up to the nth term cancel out. And so we start with x equals our series up to the nth term. On the line above, we write 10x equals 10 times a series up to the nth term. Next, we do the subtraction, just like in the informal proof. Here, a lot of the middle terms cancel out, and we are left with 9x equals 9 minus 9 over 10 to the power n. And when we divide throughout by 9, we get x equals 1 minus 1 over 10 to the power n. Now, we could argue that this extra term does tend towards 0 as n increases, but no value of n can make it equal to 0. Effectively, we have shown that 0.9 recurring does not equal 1. So where does this leave us? Our rigorous proof gave this result. In the proof, we showed that the endless terms do not all cancel out. And we showed that for any value of n, 0.9 recurring cannot equate to 1. Note that if we divide throughout by 3, we see that for any value of n, 0.3 recurring cannot equate to 1 third, which means we were wrong to assume 0.3 recurring equals 1 third at the start of this video. But if 0.9 recurring is not a decimal with infinitely many digits, then what exactly is it? And how are these objects defined without using words like infinitely many? And how can these objects be used in mathematics? These questions will be answered in the next video about why 0.9 recurring does not equal 1. This video was brought to you by ExtremeFinitism.com in association with Reveal Computer Software.